Hey you guys, welcome to today's video. Today I am doing another episode of That Was Then, This Is Now. And the idea is just looking back at things that I've bought in the last couple of months and what I ended up thinking about them in the end. Sometimes it's exactly the same. Sometimes I had some frustrations. I know a lot of people like to do monthly favorites, but for me, I can't, you know, I can't decipher, oh, something is my favorite for a month. I can't even decipher something is my favorite ever. So we're doing this instead, and people seem to like it, so I hope you do. Let's start with, there's probably, I should say, a gap between my last one and this one. So I don't want to do the things I bought in the last week or so, because I just generally, unless I hate it, I haven't been able to form a real opinion on it. And same thing, there's probably an overlap where I missed a few products in here, but I hope not. I didn't look at the last video. So I'm going to start with Surat Dewdrop Foundation. I'm not going to pull any of these out because, frankly, who needs the mess? The Surat Dewdrop Foundation I bought because another YouTuber said that it was her favorite. And, you know, so I gave it a try. I believe I had a hard time with it in the video, and I still do. I really regretted not returning this because it's expensive and it's not a lot of product. The color is too yellow for me, and the color range is quite small, so it's not like... Uh, there's no way I'm buying two of them to mix two colors, but, uh, you know, I, to me, if you have something that's expensive, why don't you expand your range so somebody like me doesn't walk around looking yellow? Just thought. I also can't stand the applicator. Okay, this one I happen to have out. This applicator is stupid. It hurts to do this, and half the time it doesn't come out. And I've heard people say, well, just store it upside down. I found that I don't want to store it up down, upside down, but if I shake it, it's easier, but it's still hard. And I can't understand why anybody would make it hard to dispense your makeup. That just doesn't make sense to me. It's just like I'm trying to be cute, but instead you're probably paying an extra, who knows, five bucks just for this kind of packaging, maybe even ten bucks. Wouldn't you rather have something that's you know, in a glass bottle with a pump. There's no reason for it to be like this, none, except for it's a dropper and you can call it dew drops. That's it. It's just about marketing and I don't appreciate that either because I don't happen to think it's clever. I appreciate good marketing. I don't think that is good marketing. I don't think it's respectful of the people who use it. And if you have any kind of hand issues at all, this is absolutely not for you. But let's talk about what it looks like. It applies a little weird. I can't put my finger on why, but it just doesn't glide like my others. And yes, the construction is back, and yes, they should be going for lunch right now, but no, they're not going to. They actually have music playing today, and I'm like, really? Really? Let me ask you something. Do you need to have music on to do your job? Because I need to have you turn your music off so I can do mine. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it applied kind of oddly. It just felt un unusual and odd to me. I didn't have an easy time with it, and I didn't think it looked that good. Then again, a couple of weekends ago, I, I went for a walk in the morning uh, with a girlfriend, and I had decided I'm not going to do my sunscreen because I know I'm going to get sweaty, it's dusty, and I'm going to wash and put on my skincare. So I used an oil base sunscreen, which, you know, all the dust sticks to. And I think I put on the Lancome Skin Feels Good or something like that. It just has a little bit of tint in it. And when I came home, I before I washed my face and did my skincare, I thought, you know what, I'm going to give this a try. I don't know why. And it looked fantastic. But it looked fantastic under the most unusual circumstances. So I'd given this a couple more tries under my normal circumstances, and I still, I just don't get it. And I regret it. Don't get it and regret it. The Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable Collection. I got mine in Barely Mauve, and it is eye, cheek, and lip. I love this cheek. It, it stays out here because I, I love it. It's a melting cheek blush. I love the packaging. I love the touch of it, but I love working with it, and I love the color and it is indeed melting and this is a very nice universal color good for me so it stays right out here 
I like this. I don't like the lip. I found the lip to be too heavy. I said that in the video and I did return it, but I did like the color. And I also really liked the sheen because it wasn't super shiny. I don't love a glossy lip and I really don't love a lip that's just like shine, shine, shine. I just don't like it. It's untouchable and I think it's old fashioned. That's just me. But to me, I just think of, you know, Robert Palmer videos. That's what a shiny lip means to me. So, and I know I'm wearing one, but it's a light one and it's not a heavy sheen. So I liked the set. I like this brand. The prices are good. I think the quality is very nice. I think what they did with it is great. Go watch the review and I'll tell you all the intricacies of that one. But I don't regret it and I still like it. I don't know how to pronounce this word, you guys. I know I'm pronouncing it wrong, but the fleur, I know I got that right, did print temps because I don't think you pronounce the T. I think it's print temps. Print, print, no, I, print, prim temps. I'm not sure how to say it, but it's the blush that is so beautiful. It looks so beautiful on the skin, even, even though there is um, a sheen to it, I find that it doesn't accentuate, um, you know, the waves of the skin, the bumps, like these little bump indentations and that kind of stuff. These guys are such it's just incredible. They're doing it on purpose, 100%. Yeah. It's beautiful, and I was afraid it might be, you know, very orange, because it looks orange in the pan, but it's not. And yet I don't pull for it, not because it's not beautiful. I think it's because when you look at it, it looks orange. When I put it on the face, it's totally workable, but I think there's something, like, in stopping me from pulling at it. Uh, so I love it. I don't regret it. I regret that I'm not using it, and maybe I should pull it out and use it. I do love it, and it is a limited edition. I think it's still available, too. Also, the Rouge Allure Lac in the color Invincible. That was the color that they put with this collection, which is the Spring Collection. As you know, the United States did not get the eyeshadows for this collection. And this color that they put in is not the same color that is in their ad, because that color is orange in its nature, and this is pink. So, I like the formula. It was a little heavy, and yet I, I kind of liked it. I didn't mind the sheen, which is surprising, but the color was just like nothing special. I, I wasn't... no. So I did send that one back, and I might buy another color at some time, but I'm waiting for... I want that orangey color to come here. And then the bronze mascara, which is not available anymore. I looked online, so that sold out. I love it. I wear it a lot. It gives me, I'm wearing it now, it gives me the emphasis that I want to, you know, outline the eye, if you will, without the hardness that black can do, and it has more interest than a brown. So this, I really enjoy, and I'm glad I have it, and I use it. The Dior 5 Color Triple Blossom Palette. I thought the look that I got was very, very pretty. I enjoyed it, but that dark color, which was the most unique color. So for me, I felt like I had those other colors, but I didn't take the time to go through my collection and see where I had them, but I felt the look was doable, except that dark color. The problem with that dark color was it did not pick up. I had to use those foamy applicators that come with it to pick it up. And that's just not acceptable for me. So that went back, even though I did love the color story. The glow stick, I kept it. I don't really use it, and eh, I'm kind of sorry that I don't use it. It's it's just, you know, another thing, especially with blush. I find you find something that works for you and constantly pull to it, or you have something that you're just so attracted to that you constantly pull for it, and I guess it didn't really make it to, I'm so attracted to it, I have to try it. I have to keep on using it. But I, I don't regret it. But it is very, very light and very, very shiny. It's not for everyone. Also. I got two lipsticks at the same time, and these are the new refillable ones. The formula feels a little bit better. I don't know if the formula changed, if it's just my imagination, but I like the formula better than their previous. The colors I got was Sakura, which I ended up really liking. At first I was like, no, 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 and then I'm like, you know what, this is almost like a nude on me, but a pinkish nude, and it's it's just a something you might turn to if you don't know what to wear, you might put on that. 
So I kept that. The other color was radiant, and I didn't feel that it was all that unique. I had things like that, and I try not to be repetitive if I can help it. So I sent that back, and I got something else, which I don't remember the name of it, but I will put it down below, I'll link it, because when I have worn it on camera, people commented on it and asked what it was. So I'll let you know what that is. And those I don't regret having. Then we have the Becca Light Shifter Dewing Tint and the Finishing Veil. I kept it and I regret keeping it because I'm not going to use it. I already start with a very shiny face. I think who this would be good for is somebody who doesn't have a lot to cover and they want that look, one. Or two, somebody who doesn't start as shiny as I do and they want that look from underneath their foundation. So you could take that which has not a lot of coverage and maybe a foundation that has not a lot of coverage to put over it and you could have a beautiful look with that. But I just, I haven't pulled for it, and I, I regret keeping it, I do. The powder I didn't like from the get-go, it didn't make a lot of sense to me because they both have the similar finish. I can't remember which one was more radiant, for lack of a better word, than the other, but why would you need... I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. I just didn't get it, and I sent it back. Natasha Denona Mini Love Palette, the blush palette with the highlighter, and the I Need a Nude in Amorosa. I didn't like the Amorosa, I thought it made me look horrible, but several people said, no, you're wrong, it looks really good on you. So I kept it, and I have turned to it a couple of times. I'm learning where it can be used, and not bad. And I do like these formulas. I think they're very comfortable, and I love the way they smell, they have coconutty smell. It's just that line all together, every color I put on, it's just, I feel like I look like death but I'm, I'm learning. The highlight and blush palette, I haven't pulled to at all. I don't care for a highlight that has color. I like highlighters to be a more natural kind of highlighter. It can be very shiny, but I don't want it to be a color because I don't like that look when, you know, people are like, oh, look at my highlighter. And then when they look straight ahead, you can see like a white slash or a blue slash or a pink slash or a gold slash. I don't like that. It's just not my deal, but I do love that blush. The color in that blush is Daria, and it is in the Diamond and Blush palette, which I got a year and a half ago. So, you know, now I have a backup of that. So I'm glad for it. The palette I never used again, the eyeshadow palette. I don't regret having it, but it's not, it's not quite right for me. In fact, I guess I do regret having it, because it's just not quite right for me. But, <laughs> this is the, like the third time I've lifted my head. Maybe I need to pull it out and see if I can make it work somehow. Fenty Soft Matte Powder Foundation. I did a video, of course, I'm talking about things I've done videos on. It was really a pain in the ass. It was just a pain in the ass. I know that people have dense brushes where they go boop boop and just use the dense brush. I don't have brushes like that. I have lighter brushes. So Applying it with a light brush, it's, it's fine. It's just, it's hard for many, many reasons. It's a lot of work. I felt that I got good outcomes on most of them, one of them not so much, but it was too much work. It, it, I don't want foundation to be that much work. And yeah, I, I sent it back. Shantakai Future Skin Cushion Foundation is beautiful. I still love it. When I opened it, I thought, wow, this is kind of orange. I don't know if it's gonna work for me, but it didn't look that orange, maybe a little bit warm beautiful on the skin. It just looks like skin. It's my point of view that I've had other cushion foundations before and they do not last as long as these. But they're priced more than these and you get less product. And I have only used this maybe 10 times and I've already turned the sponge over. Now yes it's true you get a refill but even with that refill if I wore this every day I know I would already be on the refill and almost done with it in a matter of months. So there's that, but it does look beautiful on the skin and I don't regret having it. I don't think I'll repurchase it though. This Chantecaille Butterfly Palette is so pretty. There have been several occasions that I've gone into it just for one of the taupe colors and just go swipe and it's one and done because there is yes shimmer to this, but it's not shimmery. It's 
a step above a satin, but it just gives you a little life to your lids, a little bit of dimension as you turn around, and a beautiful one and done. The greens, I am very attracted to the color green. It's hard on the eyes, really. It's That's more for a special thing, but yeah, I, I love it. I think it's beautiful. The Dior Five Colors in denim. I did two wonderful videos that nobody watched. I think I finally managed to put together a look with a blue eye that could be used on a daily basis that didn't look too much, too clowny, to look at me or to evening. So I'm, I'm pretty thrilled. Do I pull to it every day? No, blue is a difficult color for me, but I'm very glad I have that. And thinking of it, it might be fun to use the green from the Chantecaille with the blue from the denim palette and see if I can come up with something kind of springy, flingy, dingy. The Clinique Even Better Clinical Serum Foundation and the All Over Concealer and Eraser. I thought it looked fine, but clinical means something. When I looked at the ingredients, I understood what it meant. This is a foundation made for people who have oily skin or congested skin or acne skin, and I don't. Just like if you are oily, you wouldn't wear a moisturizing foundation. When you're not oily, using things with salicylic acid and other ingredients that are drying, there were some ingredients that were drying, I did a complete breakdown in that video, is not gonna, you're not gonna do yourself any favors. You, it's just, you're working in the wrong direction. You want to look youthful, not dried out. So that went back, but the concealer I love, and I use it quite a bit. As a matter of fact, it's kind of my go-to. I repurchased the Kosas in another color, and I think that's my next, yeah, I think that's the next thing I'm talking about. And it's a little bit too light um, for me, and the Clinique is a little bit better. Just a smidge. Interestingly enough, I find these formulas to be very, very similar. So one or the other, if you want clean beauty, go for the Kosas. And if you want maybe a wider selection of color, go to the Clinique. And yes, next we're going to talk about the Kosas Cloud Set Powder and the concealer and the Say Highlighter. I love that Say Highlighter. I used it again recently in a video. I don't know, sometimes I shoot things and they just don't make it. <laughs> they don't make it up to YouTube. So I don't know if you've seen me use that again, but it's just beautiful. And I use these kind of products so infrequently that just having, I keep it out here, but I can't find it. Just having that small size is, is going to work for me 100%. It doesn't have glitter in it. It has a beautiful glow to it. It has a teeny bit of a learning curve. You just, you'll figure it out in just a few minutes how to, how to work with it best. And in that video, I did talk about that. Love the cloud set. I took back. I've already told this story because I bought it again and I spoke about it in my Sephora haul video. And some wonderful viewer told me the trick with this when something hard pans is you take packing tape, the sticky tape, and you just lay it across it and then use your fingers to press that in and then lift it up and there goes your hard pan. Your hard pan, to me, that means the hard pan is absolutely about things that are on your face that are transferring to your brush. You put your brush back in your powder and it's transferring onto the powder. And I'm still working with it. But now it's changed its nature. Now that I took off that layer, when I put my brush into it, you can see it on the brush. When I first bought it, you couldn't. And Jamie Page uses this now, and she had said, you don't see it on the brush, but you see the effects on the face. And that's what I felt when I first used it, my first video, um, and then it hard panned. And now it's not doing that. And I do wonder, was I kind of kidding myself? Oh yeah, it looks really pretty. Like, does it look really pretty? Or was I just, you know what I mean? Was it just me? Now, when I use it, I don't get that same effect. So I'm not wearing powder. Let's just dip into it. I'm going to use a Sue Cube brush. This is what Lisa uses for blush. Lisa Eldridge, of course. <laughs> it's like share. You just need one word. There it is. I know this is for blush, but I, I truly don't mind it for 
powders either. Just a little bit here. It's like, I don't know. I feel like I can get a little bit more matte with my By Terry. So I'm still having a relationship with this one. Still developing a relationship after all this time. Which sounds like a Paul Simon song. And you have to be my age to know who Paul Simon is. Oh, I think that's still crazy after all these years. Yes. Which also could be my life. The Viseart Etendu Love Letter palette. What a disappointment. Just what a disappointment. And unfortunately, I've had another recent disappointment, which I don't know if that's probably aired already. Just a total disappointment. It was, you know, a warm, peachy palette with three pops or three colors of interest that were cool in their nature. And I get tension. This did not work. I, I didn't understand it. And unfortunately, I bought it from Viseart, so I couldn't return it. Um, yeah, big, big disappointment. I love their powders, but their creative direction lately is leaving me cold, ice cold. The Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Radiant Lifting Foundation. I did talk about this in my video, uh, let's try on the stuff I got at the Sephora sale. But very quickly, I decided to get the Synchro Skin Self Refreshing because the color I had was horrible on me and because this was very radiant and I already have the radiant look nailed. Anytime I want a radiant look I can get it. Now that had more coverage than my other foundations and that's how I was saying you know what I could have three different radiant things and different coverages. True but I can also put on the self-refreshing which is more matte or natural in its finish and get a radiant look out of that because I start so shiny. And that can also be used at night so I don't have sunscreen on. So if I'm going on at night, maybe I would put on a different kind of moisturizer that doesn't leave me so shiny. I can totally skip the sunscreen and I can actually get a look that is closer to matte without throwing three pounds of powder on. And that idea I like better. I thought that it would be more versatile for me. And that's not a new foundation. It's really beautiful. I will say the colors are slightly strange. Slightly strange. Uh, I got quartz at the end of the day. It's not 100% perfect, but it's, it's nice. It's, it's solid. It's not 100% right. The Westman Atelier Nectar and Brulee. They are the lit highlighters, and they are so pretty. I'm so glad I got them. I was so surprised with the brulee. And, you know, I watched her video where she explained how to use it because I thought, well, this is too dark for me. It's not made for me. And she used it more like a bronzer. And it just, I, I don't understand what the alchemy is here, but it looked so natural and fresh and real. I just think they're genius formulas or genius colors or something genius is happening there. And I love them. The CQ Spring Signature Color Quad in Akaj and the Lip Fog in a color in a name that I, I can't I can't say, so I'm not even going to try. And I really enjoy this palette. It's my first CQ palette. I think the powders are beautiful. I think the color story is beautiful. What I don't understand is why it's a spring release. Because of that red, that red is so unusual. It's not it's, it's just a beautiful kind of brick, but not quite brick. It's, it's not orangey in its nature, but it's not pinky or blue in its nature. But it just, to me, that's like fall or winter. So I am glad I have it. I do think they're beautiful. I just haven't pulled through them too much. But I think the next time I want just a basic fast look, I might. Because if you take away that red, I think that's what you get with this. It's just a beautiful, basic, shadowy, gray taupey kind of thing. And I, I think, you know, most people can use that. The lip fogs are very comfortable. That color isn't something I go to. But again, as I've told you, in my head, I like to think that I'm creative. And I like to have a variety of colors to pull to in case I want to do a look like such and such. So now I have a color like that. But it turns out it was pretty close to a color I already had, which I also don't wear. So, you know, Urban Decay Hydromaniac, this, first of all, the last time I tried an Urban Decay foundation, the colors were so horrible, 
I was angry. They were so yellow. These colors seem to be better, or at least the one I tried is so much better. I don't know if maybe they got someone new in there who said maybe we should, you know, consider that people aren't orange and, and do something else. Loved the color. And actually, I love the product. It is very, 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 very similar to the Shiseido Lifting and Hydrating, or whatever it's called, that I, I sent back to get the Synchro Skin. So if you're dying for that Shiseido, but you can't find a good color, you might want to go to the Urban Decay, because the color range is camera stopped, and I'm not sure where. But I'm going to start with the Pure Weiss Wanderer Quadrant Eyeshadow. Very pretty on the eyes. It reminds me very much of the Victoria Beckham Signature, but I did do a comparison, and they're not the same. So if you find that one doesn't quite work for you, maybe this one will. This one might be a teeny bit cooler, but there's a little bit of sheen going on. So they're not quite satins, but on the lids, they have a life to them. I really like it. I can see why I saw nobody else do a review on this. It's very, very small. So you have to be careful when you're picking up the color that you don't go into a neighboring color and pick up one of those. I think you know, maybe they could have made them a little bit bigger, which means then they would have to have a different kind of, you know, they have these for five bucks and it wouldn't fit in there if they made them bigger. If you take one color out, it's not going to work. So I, I understand it, but, you know, it's not the end of the world to me. <laughs> I, I think they're beautiful. I think they'd be great for travel and I don't regret having it. The Trini London BFF Serum and the eye color Fortune, the lip and cheek color VB. I love this product, you guys. I was very surprised. I didn't know what to expect. I've seen virtually nobody talk about this except for Trini. And I felt like it looked like skin on the face. It didn't look cakey. It didn't look cracky. It had pretty decent coverage. The color was very, very warm for me. I, I think they can make a huge improvement in the color arena. It was super warm, but the depth of tone was spot on. So take some of that orange out and I'm all over it. And I have worn it since. So it's not like it's unwearable. It's just slightly wrong. And I'm, I'm going to do another video with a couple of new products that I got that help that whole situation out. But I love that color fortune. I love, I love the formula, love the color, the lip to cheek. It was, a different color for me and that's another thing I really liked that they chose the colors for me so I went outside my box it's comfortable on the cheek easy to blend out comfortable on the lips no problems there and I was able to make that color work for me by just using a little liner and I'm very impressed with this line overall NARS Summer Solstice Eye Palette I still like it I have gone to it a couple of times since I've done it it's nothing new, but it's all these colors that you see over and over and over again in one place. And you guys, I, I, the, the packaging, there is something about that packaging that is just tactile. Do you know what I mean? My response to it is like visceral. I can feel it. I like holding that in my hand. So I kept it. And the bronzer, I had that packed up, ready to go. I'm like, this is too dark for me. And you know what? I kept it. I kept on trying it. I apply it with a brush so I get a very light application, but the color is different than my go-to cream, which is the Seychelles. So this is the Tarte color, which is a little bit cooler and a little bit lighter. And you know, this is the NARS. I think you can see that's much darker. So now I kind of have, to me, this is all I need. This is my bronzer wardrobe. I don't want to go crazy doing a bunch of bronzers. You get a couple of good ones and you're you're set as far as I'm concerned. I'm set. The Givenchy Prism Libra Skin Caring Glow Foundation. I still love it. I'm still glad that I have it. I haven't worn it as much as I would like to because of all these new things. And now I, you know, I pulled out my new bottle of Reboot and I keep on going to the Reboot. I love that Reboot, you guys. But I, I do love that Prism Libra, and yes, and the same thing with, I haven't used it 
a lot, but the Dior Forever Nude, Natural Nude, whatever it's called, yeah, Natural Nude, I like that too. I had a hard time with it in the beginning, but I keep on going back to that as well. So, like the Gucci Rouge de Beauty Brilliant Glow and Care Lipstick in Lynette Stone and Emmy Petal. I kept the Lynette Stone, honestly, not because I like the color. I do not. <laughs> I love the packaging. Maybe I should have returned it. Uh, maybe I should check to see if it's too late and I can actually find a color that I like. Maybe, but I think I threw away the box, so it's probably too late. The Emmy Petal I sent back because the fragrance on the Emmy Petal was so strong I could taste it. I could feel it on my tongue. The Lynette Stone was fragrance, but it wasn't as fragrance. I don't know, maybe it was a bad batch. Maybe different colors get different fragrances. I just cannot bear lip products that smell like perfume. Vanilla, I can take. Cake batter, I can take. Lemon, I can take. The, you know, these. Love that. I cannot take, it when it, it feels like perfume is sprayed on and in my mouth. But the packaging is insane. The Dior Forever Natural Nude Foundation and Powder, no powder. I just talked about the foundation. Powder, no powder went back again. It's a baked chalet. That's a no for me. I don't like baked chalets. It has color to it. I don't like colored powders because I believe you can just see them. The eye is reading your forehead, for instance, and suddenly the texture changes and the color changes. And why would I want that? I guess it's just those two things. And it's radiant, which I don't really need a radiant powder. You know what I mean? I'm already there. So I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And the last thing is the Hourglass Vanish Blush in Revel and Loyal. I kept these because I don't have colors like that. Is the formula revolutionary? It is not. Is it a little overpriced? I believe that it is. But I don't have colors like that. And I will say, this is not particularly emollient like many creams can be. So if you have oily skin and you want to get into creams a little bit more but you're afraid to, I don't think that's going to make you feel oily. If you are dry, I don't feel that it's going to make you feel dry either. So it's neither nor. So the formula is interesting in that way. For me, I kept them because I just don't have colors like that. And that is going to wrap up this video. Uh, that was then. This is now. I don't know that it's all changed all that much. Maybe so, maybe not. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you like these kinds of videos. And thank you so much for spending some time with me. I appreciate it. I hope you come back again. But until we meet again, be smart and safe. And I'm wishing you good health.